Hello everyone and welcome to Cryptography Home. In this video we'll be looking at the Euclidean algorithm. So the Euclidean algorithm is simply an algorithm that helps us to find the inverse or the greatest common divisors of different terms or elements. So we'll be using this algorithm to find inverses or greatest common divisors which should then be applied in the next videos uh, in different crypto systems. So this concept is very important in cryptography because we'll be using it to find inverses when we're discovering other crypto systems. However, for those of you who are not interested in the cryptography part, you can still watch this video because I'll still be explaining the general concept of the Euclidean algorithm. So before we look at the Euclidean algorithm, let's just have a reminder on a few things. You may recall that Z5 is simply the set of all non negative integers less than 5, which means Z5 is equal to uh, the set from 0 to 4. Likewise, uh, Z9, for example, is simply from the elements from 0 to 8. So this is what you have to, we have to keep in mind. So in Z5, you should also recall that 2 times 3 in Z5 is equal to 6. And this equates to 1. And this is because in Z5, uh, we say 2 times 3 is equal to 6, right? So in Z5, uh, we have to calculate the modulus after we divide by 5. So the remainder after dividing 6 by 5 is equal to 1. And this is why we say that 2 times 3 is equal to 1 in mode 5, since we only have these elements right here. So these are the only elements you can get in mode 5. And this follows that 2 times 3 will give us the identity element. So one in, when we're dealing with multiplication, 1 is known as the identity element. So since by multiplying 2 and 3, we're able to arrive at this one, we say that the multiplication of 2 and 3 gives us the identity element. So for those of you who do not know, the identity element is simply the element that when you multiply with it, you get the original element. So any element x times 1 is equal to x, and that is why we call 1 the identity element. Therefore, the inverse, we can say that the inverse of 2 is equal to 3, and the inverse of 3 is equal to 2. So since when you multiply 2 and 3, you get 1, this follows that the inverse of 2 is equal to 3. In other words, the inverse is simply the number that when we multiply to 2, we are arriving at the identity element, which is 1. Likewise, since we have to multiply uh, 2 to 3 to arrive at 1, we can say that the inverse of 3 is also equal to 2. So that is how the identity element works. However, another notation for the identity element is 1 over 2 or 1 over 3. So just keep that in mind. The identity of, uh, to say the inverse of 2, sorry, we can also note use the notation of 1 over 2. And to say the inverse of 3, the notation is also 1 over 3. So you can use this notation right here, or you can use this notation. But in this video, I've adopted uh, this notation for using negative 1 as a superscript. So, like I said, we are using multiplication as our binary operation, which is simply the operation that we are using to operate on the integers. So, another concept that we have to know is that uh, in mode 5, 0 minus 1 is equal to negative 1, and this is equal to 4. So, for those of you who did not watch the last videos, uh, like I said before, another way of expressing elements in mode is negative notation. So, we can also express it using negatives from the last element. So 4 is also equal to negative 1, 3 is negative 2, 2 is negative 3, and 1 is negative 4, and so on and so forth. Which means that when you subtract uh, 1 from 0 and arrive at negative 1, this is just the same as 4. And if you arrive at negative 3, for example, that is just the same as 2. So these are just some of the concepts on mode that I thought were, it would be best for us to look at before we start looking at the actual Euclidean algorithm in the next section. Okay, so let's proceed to look at the actual Euclidean algorithm. So like I said, it's used to find the greatest common divisor, in short, GCD of two numbers. And in this video, we'll also be illustrating how we can use the Euclidean algorithm to find the inverse. So when we find the Euclidean algorithm, or the greatest common divisor of two numbers using the Euclidean algorithm, we'll simply be looking at the element above the zero, as I will illustrate in a brief moment. So in this example, let us try to find the GCD of two numbers, 12 and 9. So just by looking at it, we can already be able to tell that the greatest common divisor of 12 and 9 is 3, right? 
because 3 is the largest integer that will go into 12 without a remainder and it is also the largest integer that will divide into 9 without a remainder. However, if we want to solve this using the Euclidean algorithm, it will be expressed as so the first task is for us to be to express 12 in terms of 9. So 12 is simply equal to 9 times 1 because 1 is the largest integer that will multiply with 9 in this case and plus 3 which is the remainder. And the next step for us is to now express this 9 in terms of 3. So that's how the algorithm works. So 9 is equal to 3, this 3 times 3 because 3 is the largest integer that will multiply with 3 to get 9 and then the remainder plus 0. So like I said before to find the GCD we we'll look at the element above the 0 and in this case the element that is above the 0 is 3 which proves that the GCD of 12 and 9 is 3. So let's just revise that one more time. To find the GCD of two elements first we're expressing 12 in terms of 9 and then we are adding the remainder and then we're expressing 9 in terms of 3 and then we're adding the remainder and the element above the 0 is the GCD. So now that we have uh, looked at that let us proceed to look at other elements of the Euclidean algorithm. So moving on with the Euclidean algorithm let's look at the following rule. An element of Zm has an inverse 1 over x or x to the power negative 1 which is simply the notation in Zm when the GCD of x and m is equal to 1. This means that an element, let's say uh, z12 for example, the elements in z12 which you have an inverse are only those elements in which the GCD of 12 and that element is 1. So if the GCD of 12 and the element x in uh, z12 is 1, that is when that element will have an inverse. For example, let's take z9. So like I already said, Z9 is simply the set of all elements, all non-negative integers, less than 9. So from Z9, we can be able to tell that the elements with inverses in Z9 are 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, and 9. This is because these are the elements in which the greatest common divisor is, uh, the greatest common divisor is 1. So if we take the GCD of 9 and that element, like I said, it's simply equal to 1. So you find that the greatest common divisor of 9 and 1 is just 1. And the greatest common divisor of 9 and 2 is 1. Likewise, the greatest common divisor of 9 and 4 is 1, and so on and so forth. However, the greatest common divisor of 9 and 3 is 3. That is why it has not been included in that set. And the greatest common divisor of 9 and what else? 6 is also 3. So it will not. that means that 6 will not have an inverse in Z9. So that is what the rule actually means. Only the elements which have the GCD of 1 with the, with the 9 are the ones which will have the inverses. So let us try to prove the GCD of one element in this set just to prove that the GCD is actually equal to 1. So using the method that we described before, let us try to find the GCD of 9 and 4. So to find the GCD of 9 and 4, first of all we we'll start by expressing uh, 9 in terms of 4. So in this case we're expressing 9 in terms of 4 and we'll see that the biggest uh, integer that we can multiply to 9 in, to 4 in this case is 2. So 9 is equal to 2 times 4 plus 1. And the next step is for us to express this 4 in terms of 1. So 4 is equal to 4 times 1 plus 0. And since the element above the 0 is 1 this proves that the GCD of 9 and 4 is equal to 1 as the algorithm states. So these are the elements which you have an inverse. So the next section, in the next sections we'll be looking at how we can uh, calculate the inverses using the Euclidean algorithm. So far we've only looked at how we can use the Euclidean algorithm to find the greatest common divisor of two numbers. In this segment I'll be illustrating how we can find the inverse of two numbers using uh, the Euclidean algorithm. So to find the inverse of a number, say 7, we'll also, be able to, we'll also be using the same Euclidean algorithm. But before we can find the inverse, the first step is to find the GCD. So we'll be using the method of finding the GCD. So to find the GCD of 9 and 7, the first thing that we'll do is we'll express 9 in terms of 7. 
So as you can see, 9 is equal to 1 times 7 and plus a remainder of 2. And the next thing is to express 7 in terms of 2 as the algorithm suggests. So 7 is equal to 3 times 2 plus 1. So the biggest integer we can multiply to 2 is 3. And the next step in this case will be to express 2 in terms of 1. So 2 is equal to 2 times 1 plus a zero and as you can see uh, the number that is above the zero in this case is one and this proves that the GCD of seven and one and of nine and seven is actually equal to one so let's just go over that one last time uh, when you're finding the GCD we'll be expressing uh, the elements to the left in terms of these elements that are in the middle so we will be expressing these elements in the middle in terms of the elements that are at the ends. That is why we express 7 in terms of 2, which was initially the remainder that we added upon here. And we'll be expressing this 2 in terms of 1, which is simply the remainder that we added upon here. So that is basically the method that we are using to find the GCD. So this proves that the GCD of 9 and 7 is equal to 1. However, to find the inverse, we'll proceed with this. So from equation 1, it follows that, so this is equation 1, it follows that since 9 is equal to 1 times, uh, so we're not using equation 1 actually, we're using equation 2. Since 7 is equal to 3 times 2 plus 1, it shows that 1 is equal to 7 minus 3 times 2. So we're simply making 1 the subject of the formula. So, but in equation 1, 2 is equal to 9 minus 1 times 7, right? When we make 2 the subject of the formula. So what we'll do next is we'll simply replace this this 2 by 9 minus 1 times 7. So this shows that 1 is equal to 7 minus 3 times, so where there was 2, we'll put 9 minus 1 times 7. So we're simply substituting a 2 by that. Hence, 1 is equal to 3 times 9 so if we expand this negative 3 times 9 is just negative 3 times 9 and negative 3 times 1 times 7 is just 3 times 7 so the negative times negative gives us a positive number so you must know that at this stage it is best to leave them in form of just multiplying the two elements you should not uh, expand it don't write 27 because writing it like this will make it easier for us to solve it using the Euclidean algorithm so as you can see, we have 7 plus 3, 7. So we have two 7s here. It's like saying x plus 3x. So 7 plus 3, 7 will give us 4, 7s. Which means that uh, 7 plus 3, 7s is 4, 7s, as you can see. So we're still subtracting 3 times 9 on the other part. But you notice that... Uh, with at this stage we can then make the conclusion that 1 is equal to 4 times 7 since all multiples of 9 are 0 in mode 9 so in mode 9 like i said before a 9 in mode 9 is simply a 0 right so in mode 9 mode 9 will contain all the elements from 0 up to 8 but then a 9 in mode 9 is simply a 0 because the remainder of dividing 9 by 9 is a 0 so all multiples of 9, whether 9, 18, 27, 36, and so on and so forth, will always give a value of 0 in mode 9. So at this stage, we can simply cancel out the 3 times 9, which means that in mode 9, 1 is just equal to 4 times 7. And this means that the inverse of 7 is 4. You may recall that the inverse is simply the element that when we multiply with it, it gives us the identity element. In this case, from the, state, the, the third statement, we can make the conclusion that 4 times 7 is equal to 1, which means the inverse of 7 is equal to 4. So this is how the Euclidean algorithm works. So just to make things a little bit clearer, for those of you who might still, be, uh, who might still have difficulties, let us try another example just to make things a little bit clearer. So to find, in this one, we'll find the inverse of 9 in the same, in the same z9. So we'll find the inverse of 5, sorry, in z9. So in this segment, we'll be calculating the inverse of 5 in z9. So the first step, as usual, is to find the GCD of 9 and 5. So as we've been seeing, the 
first thing that we have to do is to express 9 in terms of 5. So 9 is equal to 1 times 5 plus 4. Now that we've expressed 9 in terms of 5, we then have to express 5 in terms of 4. So 5 is simply equal to 1 times 4 plus 2. And when I say in terms of 4, what I mean is we have to multiply a certain integer to 4. So the biggest integer that we can to 4. In this case, the integer that we can multiply to 4 is simply 1, which is why 5 is equal to 1 times 4 plus a remainder of 1. So the next step will be to express 4 in terms of 1. So 4 is simply equal to 4 times 1 plus 0. Therefore, we can conclude that the GCD of 9 and 5 is simply equal to 1 since 1 is the element above the 0. So the GCD of 9 and 5 is 1. And as the rule states, uh, an element that has an inverse will have the GCD of 1. So the next thing for us is to find the actual inverse of 5 and Z9. So to find the inverse of 5 and Z9, first of all, we'll take this second statement. So we'll, have, we'll make 1 the subject of the formula. So you have to know that this is what we'll be doing each time we want to find the inverse. So to make 1 the subject of the formula, 1 will simply be equal to 5 minus uh, 1 times 4. So in this statement, we're making 1 the subject of the formula. And the next thing will be for us to expand this 4. So to represent this 4 in terms of the other digits as the first equation suggests. From the, so from the first equation, we can see that 4 is equal to 9 minus 1 times 5. And we'll use this value and we'll replace it where there is a 4. So we'll simply replace 4 by uh, 9 minus 1 times 5 in the second equation. The next thing will be for us to expand this. So five, 1 is simply equal to 5 minus. So negative 1 times 9 is just negative 1 times 9. And negative 1 times negative 1 times 5 is just 1 times 5. So the negatives are just eliminating each other. And like I said before, it's best that you keep the expressions in this form without expanding them fully because it will make the simplification a lot easier. So as we can see, we have 1 5 here and we also have another 5 here. So 5 times another 5, 5 plus 1 5 is equal to uh, 2 5. So a 5 plus another 5 is equal to two fives minus uh, one times nine so like i said before any multiples of nine in z9 are simply equal to zero so we might as well remove this part from the equation which shows that one is simply equal to two term times five so we can then conclude that the inverse of five is equal to two and we can also make the conclusion from this that the inverse of two is equal to five since two times five gives us a 1. So all in all, this is how we can find the greatest common divisor of two elements and the inverse of two elements using the Euclidean algorithm. So like I said, we'll use this knowledge in later videos of cryptography. So like I said before, the aim of this video was to simply look at how we can calculate the inverse of numbers in different modes. And this knowledge that we've established from this video, we'll use it in the next videos in other crypto systems. So in the next videos, we'll be looking at other crypto systems, which you apply the concept of finding an inverse. So we'll be using the Euclidean algorithm to find the inverse of the elements in the next video. So you might want to check that out if you're interested. So having reached this far, this is the end of the video. Uh, like if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you'd like to watch more cryptography videos. And I'll see you next time. Bye.